apologetics. If you are a Christian, you know that when you read your Bible that theology matters because it affects how you live as a Christian, it affects your convictions and your belief, your faith. We believe as Christians that the Holy Bible is the Word of God. It's not the Word of God in the sense of it was sent down by God. Men were driven, men were inspired, and they wrote what they heard from God as they were moved along by the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us in, in the epistles. Everything we know about God is recorded here. This is where we get our theology. Theo theology means knowledge of God. And that this is important, as, especially when we look at other faiths and other beliefs, we compare it to what the Bible says. It's very important that we do that because we're going to look at a verse in a minute from the Quran, probably the most controversial verse in there. So much about this verse, theologically wrong in, in many aspects. That's important because the Quran affirms the Bible, affirms the scriptures of the Jews and Christians the Torah especially, and the Gospels especially. So surely that is a problem with the Quran rather than the Bible. And so Muslims believe that they have the same God as God of the Bible. But because of the contradictions, this is a massive problem. And in this verse I'm going to look at, we will see why. And I want you, if you are a Muslim, consider it. Think about what this verse is saying. We see that in the Quran it addresses certain teachings of the Bible like the Trinity and the deity of Christ and it addresses them and it misrepresents them in order to refute them. But if you are misrepresenting something, you're not in a position to refute it because you've not represented it correctly. So let's have a look at this verse anyway. I'm reading from the Pictou version of the Quran. Reading from Surah 4, verse 157. And this is what it says. And because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger, they slew him not, nor crucified him. But it appeared so to them. And those who disagree concerning it are in doubt of it. They have no knowledge of it except pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain. But Allah took him up to himself. Allah was ever mighty and wise. That's also this 158. But straight away with the verse, first verse, this is talking about the Jews boasting that they killed the Messiah. Now what's the first thing you spot there? Why would the Jews be bragging that they killed the Messiah? Because if Jesus was the Messiah, they wouldn't have crucified him. They didn't think he was the Messiah. That's why they had him killed for blasphemy. So that's one theological point they've completely missed. To the Muslim, the Messiah means nothing. It doesn't mean anything because they view Jesus as a mere messenger. Jesus, son of Mary. He's not just son of Mary, he's son of God. And again, you know, we see that they're trying to refute Christian doctrine. Uh, Jesus is never saw called son of Mary in the Bible. He was, Jesus was never born biologically. He was a miracle. He was born of the Holy Spirit. God intervened. He used Mary as a vessel for the Jesus Christ to be born. You see, because Jesus Christ is eternal, he is the eternal son. But Muslims believe that when he was born and Mary, that was his first appearance 
as a messenger. They believe that he performed miracles. They believe that he did great things. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He made the blind see and the lame walk. To them, he's just a messenger because the vehicle of the crown is to boost the profile of Muhammad. Then it goes to the meat of the verse, which is, they slew him not, nor crucified. Now this isn't just against theology, this is against basic history. Even in the first century history, there's people like Josephus and Tacticus and there's other people who weren't particularly fans of the Jews and they weren't fans of Christians. Some of them were Roman, some were Jews, and some were different um, ideologies and ideas. It was recorded as a historical fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was risen from the dead. And the, these other people outside the Bible recorded that the disciples went out telling everyone that Jesus has risen from the dead. Now, this wouldn't have been possible if the Romans or the Jews could have provided a body. But then there's another problem, is that Muslims believe that the first disciples were Muslims. Now, if Jesus and his disciples were Muslims, they wouldn't have manufactured uh, this idea that Jesus died and then rose again just for someone 600 years to come and say that it never happened. It talks later there in that verse about that those who disagree with what I'm saying, this is supposed to be Allah, this is supposed to be the same God of the Bible teaching, saying this. Those that disagree with concerning this are in doubt of it and they have no knowledge of it except suit of conjecture but this is the conjecture this is the conjecture here because for 14 centuries muslims have been speculating how it happened there is a swoon theory that jesus didn't die on the cross he just fainted and he was put away there's also the idea that one of the disciples took his place on the cross and so everyone thought it was jesus on the cross dying because someone was made to look exactly like Jesus. But even if that were true, even if somebody did look like Jesus or some one of the disciples did take his place, that person would still be a sinner because the Quran records that there's only Jesus that never sinned. Muslim theology says that there's only Jesus that was perfect and sinless and born of a virgin, was perfect in every way. Not even Muhammad was perfect. You know, if if someone if someone died on the on the cross, that person would be sinful. So they could not redeem mankind from sin because they are sin, sinful themselves. They couldn't be a sacrifice. There's only Jesus Christ could be a sacrifice. Cran God he was just taken up, and this other person was put on a cross, take his place. That would make Jesus a coward. That would make Jesus someone who's not to the task or a failure. But that, that's, that's not the case we get in the Bible. And so this is why theology is important. It says in that verse 158, but Allah took him up to himself. This is a statement of the resurrection. He was taken up to himself. But this happened after he died on the cross. So here we have a real theological conundrum it's worse it's especially so for the muslims because they have to reconcile this and so they are forced into a corner by the quran i can imagine that the the quran comes from the imagination of muhammad but muslims declare that there's none of muhammad in the quran it's all it's all god speaking to him through the angel to him that he just recited whatever God said to him through that angel. When Allah is saying these things which are obviously wrong, are an obvious contradiction of what he has said in, in the Gospels, which are eyewitness accounts, we have a real problem. And I want you to think, if you're a Muslim out there, 
I want you to think about this. Just this verse. There's lots of other verses we could go to. But this verse is the real problem because it denies history. Remember that the Gospels are eyewitness accounts. There are from, it's not just one Gospel because Muslims believe that Jesus had a book that he carried away around with. That's what he was speaking as his, as his revelation from God. But that's not what it is there. The Gospels are an account, the, the fourfold Gospel are an account of the life of Jesus Christ and what he said, what he did, the miracles he performed and his death and especially his death and resurrection uh, for the sins of mankind. Because all these, a lot of these things in the Gospels, they are fulfilments of earlier scripture, like the scripture of the Old Testament, the prophets and the law. And all these point to Jesus Christ. And so it's very important they are fulfilment. And so when we see this verse, which is contradicting everything that came before it and claims to be the truth, but far removed, thousands of miles away, and 600 years later, a man comes along and he's contradicting He's contradicting Christian and Jewish facts. So the Quran, it turns out, is an argument against Judaism and it's against Christianity, while at the same time contradicting. It affirms in, in one breath, contradicts it in another, and you, cannot, you can't do both. There, is, there has to be one truth. Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again. Or as this verse says, that none of that happened. If you've got no explanation of what actually happened and you're, you are forced to manufacture stories of what could have happened or this or that, as Muslims have been doing for 14 centuries, you are left with a problem. And so I ask you as Muslims to examine this text, think about it and think about it in light of what the Gospels teach. And I ask you, to read it and look and seek God what the truth is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He's not just a messenger. He lived a life that was pure and clean. He, he addressed hypocrisy. He addressed religion. He addressed all the things we may have in our lives. This is Jesus Christ. He volunteered to come as a human being and to die for our sins. He didn't have to, but he, he wanted to out of love for his people. After the resurrection, he gave the Holy Spirit to people who, who trusted in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who repented of their sin, trusted in the Lord. And he gave the Holy Spirit and empowered them to take the gospel around the world. And so, Christianity was prevalent even in Arabia at the time of Muhammad. So the story, he heard stories here and there and he obviously picked up on those. But the, there is no proper understanding of the theology of the Bible. And that's why I cannot believe that it comes, the Quran comes from God because it doesn't have a proper grasp of the theology of the history of uh, Israel, the prophets, of, of the life of Christ. It doesn't have a proper understanding or a grasp of all these things. Jesus also warned several times that he was going to be killed, mocked, crucified, and on the third day rise, rise again. So there was plenty of warning, plenty of prophecy, and plenty of fulfillment in the life of Jesus. We know that even in the crucifixion itself, Jesus fulfilled so many prophecies in, in that event alone. Taking the vinegar to his mouth, he would be pierced in his side that he would say, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And all these things are fulfillment on the cross. They're vital, they're a, they're important to the theology of the Bible and of the Gospels so that we all may believe that Jesus 
his Lord. He is God in the flesh and rose again. In Revelation 1, uh, verse 17 and 18, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I was dead, but I live forevermore. And this is a reference to the Old Testament where God would say, I am the Alpha, Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. And Jesus was saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He's saying he is God. Though he died, he didn't stay dead because, because he was sinless. Death could have no hold on him. And because he was the perfect sacrifice to atone for our sins, he was able to rise up and live forever. And we live because of him. And he is coming soon. So I hope that you, whether you're a Christian, Muslim, of any religion, of any persuasion, that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And you must come to him. You must be born again of his spirit. And he will give you his own spirit to be enabled to live. Not by ritual, not by religion, not by you doing your five prayers and your pillars of faith or this or that. Or doing things in a certain way to be seen by men. But to trust in Jesus as Lord of all. Because he loves you Muslims. He loves you all. <laughs>